Hello everybody, it's Tommy and welcome back to another video for the Disney Save. Today we are going to be working on the very first Mulan themed lot for the save file. And I know I've been hyping this up for a little bit of time now, I'm really excited to finally get into some Mulan builds. This is definitely one of many that's coming down the line. If you are a fan of Mulan, you are going to like a lot of the stuff that's going to be coming out over the next few weeks. Basically all of Mount Komorebi is entirely inspired by Mulan. That is, I think, a given with the rest of the world, whereas we don't have a ton of opportunity to do Asian-inspired culture. And Snowy Escape did give us at least a world that is slightly inspired by Asian culture, be it Japan, but it is a good opportunity to go ahead and do some of the theming where before I really wasn't sure where to put Mulan or where exactly it would go, but I'm really glad that we got Snowy Escape and Mount Komorebi because it does give me some opportunities, I feel, to be able to do Mulan in a lot more depth. And it's cool because there are quite a few ideas and things that we're going to be doing and I'm really, really excited about them. And today's is the first one. So this is actually a restaurant, but it serves as more of like a multifunctional place. It is is definitely a bit different than any lot that we've done for the save file so far. I do wish there was a way to do like multi type of lots, like a lot that is maybe a restaurant and a bathhouse and a shop, which is really what today's sort of is. But because of the game mechanics, I can't actually get it to function the way that I would like fully visualize this lot to look. Today's build is called Honor to Us Hall, and it is based after the matchmaker scenes from Mulan. There are three buildings on the lot. There's the main one in the center, which is actually a restaurant, and the way that the lot is actually labeled. So more than anything, this is a restaurant. It has a very, very limited menu of teas and very small, dainty, Chinese-inspired food items that are available in the game. So small, very quick, like somewhere that you might just come more for drinks than anything, but I did want to throw in a couple of food options just because of the fact that it is labeled as an actual restaurant. And then you'll notice that I have built two other buildings on the lot, and those are inspired by the scenes leading up to the matchmaker. So Mulan has to go through a little bit of like a get ready process where she first goes to like a small bathhouse slash spa of some kind, and they redo her hair and her makeup and then they take her to another building where she's fitted with a proper outfit for the occasion and then they finally end up at the final building which is the actual matchmaker's tea house of sorts. So I wanted to maybe do something a little bit special and include all three and sort of pack them together on this lot in a very like villagey type of setting which I think is very appropriate for Mulan. Now again because of the game mechanics it just limits me a little bit on the functionality of what you can do here. I wanted to add a couple of extra options of things to do so realistically you could come to this lot for reasons other than going to the restaurant the main portion is obviously the restaurant but the other two buildings do serve minor purposes one of them is a shop of sorts so there are a couple of mannequins that you're going to see in there that are sporting some appropriate attire and probably some of the closest stuff that we have in game to be able to match some of the stuff that you see Mulan wear throughout the movie and some of the other characters as well and originally I had to to mark this lot as a retail in order to be able to properly dress the mannequins anyway. So there is like a sense of if you really wanted to, you could turn this into a retail space and maybe sell some clothes out of uh, one of the side buildings. But that building in particular is a little bit more for show. That is the building off to the left, right on the entranceway. The building to the right is a mini bathhouse and you could come here and obviously use the public bath space. It is really sort of elegant. I tried to match the movie be as close as I possibly could with keeping in mind that we are placing the movie time period in some sort of like ancient Chinese time. So it's very oldy, villagey. Um, it reminds me a little bit of when we did some of Belle's village builds back in the day. I tried to not use anything that was too modern or, or too technology based here. We're doing a lot of candles, a lot of simplicity, and it's very elegant and pretty at the end of the day. One of the big things for this build as well was just trying to replicate Chinese architecture texture the best that I could with the game mechanics and the limited packs. When we got Snowy Escape, it was based a little bit more around Japan. 
So when we did Harry Housen's, that being a Japanese sushi restaurant, there was definitely a lot more options. And I felt really comfortable just kind of pulling things out of the catalog that came with that pack and using them throughout the build. But for this, it required a little bit more research and a little bit more piecing together items from other packs that I wouldn't necessarily think to use here. A little bit of Jungle Adventure and Island Living, which does sort of make sense, but I do of course wish that we had more of like a dedicated pack that was leaning into some of the things that you would want for a um, Chinese inspired build such as this. We got a little bit of it in city living, but a lot of it is very modern as well. So trying to find a balance of using some stuff that is a little bit more ancient looking and just old looking and also just keeping it relevant to the location Definitely a tough one. I tried to do the best that I could. I definitely used a bit of Snowy Escape here because some of this stuff, although more based in Japanese culture, was as close as what we actually have in game. And I think that I found a happy medium. Of course, as always, if we do get a pack that is a little bit more heavily focused on Chinese culture, I will be able to go back and revamp a lot of this. In particular, windows and things like that. I've used a lot of the Jungle Adventure windows here and they do really work. They fit and sort of look very similar to some of the stuff that we had seen from the movie. But there are beautiful, like round versions of those types of windows with the detailing in it and stuff. And of course I would have been able to use that kind of stuff here and it would have been really really nice but we have to make do with what we have and so i have used like a pretty big combination of island living city living jungle adventure and definitely a bit of base game so the first building we're decorating is the bathhouse and i wanted to just do two simple bathtubs when i was doing this on stream a couple of people were asking about those bathtubs and they're actually customizable like craftable bathtubs that you can get from the woodworking table i believe so as you like level up i think it becomes one of the options of things that you you are allowed to make but if you enter the show hidden objects cheat you will be able to pull that up right away in the movie mulan actually sits in like a perfectly round sort of wooden bathtub and that would be so nice a round bathtub is one of the like biggest bath items on my list of i hope they give it to us in the sims i would love like any shape that's different than the l sort of corner ones that they put in or just like a standard bathtub i would love like a beautiful round one we'll probably end up getting a modern one i have a feeling if we ever get resorts or something like that it seems very hand in hand to add something like that but this is probably the one that I think fits the best. If you're wondering why I didn't use the Snowy Escape actual like new sauna item, it's because it's just very, very big and it does look to me like it's made to be more of an outdoor thing. So even just sizing one down and putting it in here, I didn't think it would function very well. And the actual bathtub that we've gone ahead and used here is definitely a little bit closer to the one from the movie. Something that was really, really helpful for me this time around is uh, it was recommended to me that there is a site that you can actually go through frame by frame for movies. You can type in which movie you want and you're able to go through every single frame of the movie and they're in really high quality and you can just like completely see like all of the backdrops. You don't have to pause. A lot of like my watching of movies and research when it comes to doing Disney related stuff is sort of grabbing references like that by just like constantly pausing and trying to check out the background. And if there's a vase or there's like a plant in the background, just trying to replicate it the best that I possibly can. And I'm actually really excited that somebody pointed this out to me. I have seen this before, but I always forget that it's something that could be helpful to me when doing these types of builds. And I had it after we did this little bathhouse section. So it was really cool for me to be able to go through and like literally look at the backdrop when it came to doing the matchmaker and everything. And you'll see when we do the restaurant portion, which I definitely love, I think you guys are gonna really enjoy. It is as close to a lot of the stuff in the movie as I could possibly do. I of course, always add a little bit here and there. I like to add a little more detail and things that I can just to spice it up. And so things don't look so simple all the time and just use like appropriate items and things. But I really do think that it came out really, really nice. The restaurant itself, very unique, very inspired by Mulan. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So for the second little house, like I mentioned, this is more of, I guess you could say a retail space. This is the area that Mulan gets ready in. So after they wash her hair and like give her a bath and everything, they bring her to a separate location where she is fitted with an outfit and they do her makeup and they sort of put her on this like table that she sits on in the middle of the room. Again, another item that we really, really don't have. We did get one platform item with Get Famous that is sort of like a 
thing that you can stand on to try on clothes, but it's made to be more of like a standing thing and you put it in front of a couple of mirrors and it's more towards that. And it's very modern looking as well, so it didn't really work. But I was able to find, I think, a couple of items to sort of represent the idea of it instead. So of anything in this build, the three buildings, this one is definitely the one that is just mostly decorative. I don't love to do decorative things for the Disney save. I really like to have everything have some sort of purpose and be functional. But given that there is so many other things on this lot, I felt like maybe it was okay to have one area of it be more of like a reference to the movie and less of something that you can actually go and do. I was imagining that you could come to this lot just for the bathhouse. I think that that would be kind of fun. There is another sauna slash bathhouse in Mount Komorebi for my version of the Disney save. It is Oaken's that's located at the top of the mountain. You actually need it for the mountain excursion and it's more of like your traditional style bathhouse. There will be opportunities for me to do actual like more dedicated saunas and spas later on in the save. I have a couple of ideas of things that I would like to do and one of my big things with the Disney save is trying to use as much stuff from The Sims as possible. Like if it exists in the game, I really, really would would like an opportunity to include it somewhere in the save file so that if you're interested in like any aspect of the sims it's available somewhere in the save file for you to try out so we will probably be doing that kind of a thing somewhere later on where i feel like i can get the theming a little bit better and it's more appropriate but for now this is like a cute tiny little bathhouse you could just come to the lot and use it for that i was imagining maybe like a little bit of rags to riches or any storyline where a character is is like running away from home or they don't have like a proper home space it's more of like a public bathhouse so that is i don't know something that i was keeping in mind in the back of my head this other room you could come and do your makeup at the very least one of the packs added the vanities where you could do your makeup it's not really the same process of how they do it in mulan it's definitely um very very different however i felt like i still wanted to have it in here as sort of like a shout out to the movie and it killed me a little bit inside to use this particular vanity because it's just not necessarily the style that I would want to use for this build, but it's the only one we have. So it's one of those things where it's kind of a happy medium. I have to use it if I want to be able to allow your Sims to come in here and possibly do their makeup before they go to the restaurant or whatever. But then you have to use an item that really is not very close to anything from Mulan. So instead, tried to decorate the rest of the space around it to be a little bit more in reference to the movie and get away in its place with the more modern vanity. So obviously tackling the first Mulan build means that we will of course be doing some Mulan characters very shortly here down the line. The next build for Mulan that I started, I actually wanted to take a little bit of a break from this area of Mount Komorebi that's been very very commercial and a lot of like public spaces so far because we did some changes and there were some things that got moved around from the original plans of this world. So I had two lots in this area that weren't planned out exactly and I really wanted to touch base with patrons before we move forward but I needed to go ahead and move on to the next build so I did go ahead and start the Fa family farm and that should be one of the more up and coming builds it's a very very large one it is a 50 by 50 with a lot of detail and it is obviously a Disney princess home so I really want to knock it out of the park there's terrain there's landscaping there's going to be a lot of research and things that go into it and I'm expecting it to take me a little bit of time maybe not as much time as like Arendelle Castle or some of the castle builds that we do but I do want to give it as much detail and attention as some of the other ones have had and it is a bigger build at a 50 by 50 at the end of the day so look forward to that there might be like a slight delay in content as I go ahead and work on that but in the meantime we can go ahead and start some of the other characters so obviously that means we are going to get to make Mulan and that's really exciting she's the second Disney princess that's going to be entering the save file you you guys know I love Disney princesses so it's really exciting for me whenever I get an opportunity to go ahead and make one. The only other one that we have in the save file right now is Tiana and Naveen so I'm really excited to do Shang and Mulan as well and then her whole family, her grandmother, her dog has been very heavily requested so if you're worried about that don't worry we're going to make sure we do the dog as well and some version of Mushu and Cricket. In the save file we have a couple of different ideas of how we're going to go ahead and include those guys as well so I'm excited it'll be fun. 
we'll probably do some stuff with the emperor i got a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline that i'm really really excited for and i know mulan has been like everybody's been really worrying and wondering what we were going to do here as far as like mulan so i'm excited to finally get some of this stuff out so that you guys can see it we did go ahead and plan some other things for the two lots that are in the center that were missing and we weren't really sure what we were going to do i had a meeting the other day with some people and we were able to figure it out and i'm really excited about what we came up with it's different than what was originally planned for and i think that that's exciting because this seems to always happen in the process of the save file like you go in with one idea and then as we sort of go throughout the world something has to change or there's some like big change that has to be made that requires me to move things or fix something and then it all sort of changes and we have to do something completely different but i actually think that the plan that we came up with for the second round of like planning the world is much better than the first one so it really worked out and i'm excited you guys are going to like some of the stuff that we have coming down the line I did go ahead and add like a couple of finishing touches on this other building that you can get ready in. I wanted you guys to see some of the decorations and I had to dress the mannequins. It was a very, very complicated process to actually go and mark the lot as like a retail and then have somebody purchase the lot and then dress the mannequins. I'm not exactly happy with what we have the mannequins wearing. Of course, I'm not exactly happy with having to use the mannequins because they're very modern and they're more for like a retail setting, but it's one of those things where we just have nothing else in the game like it so if i'm going to do this idea i have to use like these very modern glossy mannequins and what they're sporting is basically a combination of stuff that we have gotten from city living and there was a lunar new year base game update i think a year or so ago that they gave us some stuff for so it's a little modern it definitely isn't as conservative as some of the stuff that you see in mulan but it's one of those things you just kind of have to use it now for the main rest restaurant portion. This is something that I was obviously most excited to do because this is going to be very different than basically anything that we have for the save file so far. The restaurant itself is very small. It is very, very limited seating and that is so intentional. I did not want this to be some like popping, constantly busy, line out the door type of location. It's very secluded. It might even be more of like a, you only are allowed to come in when you're invited type of situation. There's obviously a little bit of like story play element where you have to kind of come up with your own lore when it comes to this stuff. But I just didn't want it to be like this giant restaurant the way that we have done for Tiana's Palace and Tiana's and even like Eve's Terrarium or Harryhausen's those are both limited seating but this is even worse. One of the really cool features from the pack was the Kotatsu tables which are these sort of low laying tables that you sit on either some kind of like a pad or a very very small pillow and they're very close to the ground and you sort of like huddle up to them. They're Japanese inspired because of the pack but I thought that it would be so fun to be able to use them in here. When when Mulan actually comes in here to have tea, she is sitting at a table that is extremely low to the ground and there's some kind of like a padded pillow on the ground that she kneels on and that the matchmaker herself is sitting across from her on something very similar. So the idea of that type of a setting, this is pretty much as close as we can get currently to matching something like that. And I was excited about the idea of possibly having this place be entirely that where you could come and use these tables to get some food and have that be more in like this type of a setting that's very different from uh, the other tables that we have from some of the other packs in the game. But unfortunately, the game doesn't allow me to use them as like dedicated dining stations for restaurants, which I think is really frustrating because if you sort by dining stations or like chairs or tables they come up under the restaurant category but then when you place them down it doesn't count them for individual seating so unfortunately that meant that i did have to do traditional seating in here as well whereas i originally went into the idea of this with the thought that i would only use the kotatsu tables however it just didn't work out so we have a combination of both here we have at least two of those tables and then i did have to go ahead and do like two regular dining stations and more likely than not, 
your sims are going to come in here and be gravitated towards just those two dining tables which means that it is going to be extremely limited seating i also wanted to have an area in the center that was more representative of the actual scene from the movie where mulan is sitting with the matchmaker because realistically what this actually is is she's coming in here to sort of like perform and be instructed by the matchmaker and like get to know the matchmaker so that she can properly suit mulan with a significant other or a family of some kind and so it's not actually a restaurant it's not actually like a location that you would go and get tea or some place that people would go to regularly it's more of like a very private um ceremony type of event so i wanted to have more of like a representation of the scene from the movie but then obviously we have to find a way to make it a more functional lot for the save file and so to me a restaurant is a really good choice. We also thought about doing a cafe, but we already do have a cafe in the world with Olaf's cafe up at the top of the mountain. And the thing that I think sucks most about doing cafes is the fact that you're not really allowed to pick the menu, where I really wanted this place to serve some traditional Chinese cuisine and also have a basically exclusive tea menu. So being able to pick the menu ultimately is the reason why this place got marked as a restaurant. It also means that I have to have a little bit more here than I would have originally wanted. Wanted, meaning that we have to have like a full kitchen and a bathroom. It's a lot requirement because of the lot type. So we actually ended up adding a downstairs and there is a set of stairs that we're going to throw in towards the back that are hidden behind some dividers with a really cool kitchen and some bathrooms on the bottom floor that I actually think are really pretty. And I got to use a lot of fun items from Snowy Escape. There were some shelves and special things that got added that have like a lot of ingredients and bowls and sort of like tea reference type of items on them. And I made a very unique kitchen, which is sometimes hard to do in a restaurant because of the fact that it requires basically the same items and we have only a few that come with dine out. It's sometimes hard to make the space look any different from any other restaurant. But I was able to do it this time around and I really, really like how it turned out when we go downstairs and get to see it a little bit more. I'll show it off quite a bit. Another huge thing that was like such a problem when doing this build was doors and windows. I have done such a weird mashup of doors and windows to try to get this to resemble what I was seeing from the movie in any way possible. So basically I had to take the really tall glass island living windows and then I've hit in a divider inside the window originally and then I ended up finding the jungle adventure windows and sliding them in place around it in a different way to make this like weird mashup of windows that you're definitely going to be seeing again in the future when it comes to other Mulan builds because I've already started and I know that they are I'm having to do some weird stuff just to like match the architecture at all it came out okay it's not exactly what they show in the movie but again it's just one of those things the door is really the big problem because there are these beautiful sort of like they open like French doors but they're obviously more Chinese inspired and they have a lot of detailing in them and carvings into them that are similar to like the dividers in here or some of the windows and stuff but the difference is that I can't actually mesh items together because if I put too many items blocking the door then it's not going to allow your sims to get through very easily and they get very agitated so instead I did do a somewhat little bit of a trick by taking some hidden objects in the game and sort of reframing the outside of the doorway with a natural looking wood. I did not replicate it on the inside for this build. I will eventually. Uh, one of the big problems was that I couldn't get the tool mod to work when I was attempting this build, which I really needed for multiple reasons. The roofing being one of them and trying to be able to add some extra detailing to the roof that would have really helped amp this up and make it feel more based in Chinese culture. But there were uh, quite a few things that I really was leaning on the idea of using tool for. And I can't understand why I have no idea Idea what I am doing wrong but if you're familiar with the tool mod it's basically like a mod that allows you to add objects around your sims world off of the lot but another big feature of it is that it allows you to rotate any object in the catalog in like weird axes. so if you have an item and it really can only go vertically it will allow you to turn it horizontally which really opens up the idea of using a lot of different 
items as something that they're not. And I wanted to be able to take the same wooden pieces that I had used around the sides of the door frame and turn them so that I could put them above the door frame as well. But I couldn't get Tool to work. And no matter how many times I install Tool and I go through the directions and I watch tutorials and I follow the instructions, for some reason, after a few updates ago, I have not been able to get Tool to work. So anything that requires it, I sort of have to find a workaround or I just pause it and wait and I don't end up doing it for a little while. That is one of the reasons why Forgotten Hollow has not gotten finished because there were a few things that I really, really needed tool for in order to finalize that world. And because I can't get the mod installed, I can't finish it in the way that I originally wanted to be able to. I do have plans for Forgotten Hollow, don't worry. I know that I really kind of took a break there and did not finish Forgotten Hollow. And um, normally I would release the save file and like a world overview and everything. And it has been a few months now since we finished that world. And I know people are like, Kind of wondering where it is and asking about it. I just had a lot of stuff that's been going on in my personal life and things that have been kind of going crazy for me over the past few months. And to maintain doing the Disney save at all over the past couple of weeks in particular has been very tough. And I'm trying to sort of push through and refine a schedule and get back to things that are normal and then inevitably catch up on some things that I have missed along the way, which is the Forgotten Hollow World Tour and finalizing that world so that I can get it out for you guys to download but I have made at least a little bit of progress on it so hopefully in the next like month or so I will have that available and hopefully I can get tool to work so that I can actually finish it off. And for the last part of today's build, we have the downstairs portion, which is the two bathrooms and the kitchen. I love this area. I don't know what it is. It's just so pretty to me and it was really fun for me to be able to just, I guess, use some of the theming that I had done around the rest of the build, but I got to do it my own way because there's really no reference for something like this. So I got to use a lot of the items, but just take my own spin on it. And it's very colorful. It's very organic. There's lots of plants around. I was imagining like teas and natural ingredients and that they might like grow their own fresh ingredients for the teas and it would be very high end and sort of special for like a dedicated matchmaker building. So that is what we have for today's build. I really hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned for the screenshots at the end and stay tuned for the matchmaker cast that will be out on Thursday. Thank you all so much for watching. If you would like to support the Disney save on Patreon, you can do so by clicking the link in my description box down below or the one at the end of the video. Follow me over on Twitch. I go live three times a week for the Disney save and variety on Thursdays. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can get notified every single time I upload and I will talk to you all in the next one.